Hi, my name is Raquel, and however you're joining us today, whether by Facebook Live or Zoom, we want to welcome you to worship with us today here at St. James, where our motto is, Touching Lives Through Jesus Christ. This morning's call to worship comes from a paraphrase of Psalm 8. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, how you have set your glories on the heavens and the earth. When I see your heavens and the work your fingers made, the moon, the stars that you ordained, yes, worthy is your name. God, you are great, and we worship you on today. Amen. Amen.
Good mm -hmm. morning, St. James. We are here this morning as representatives from the nominating committee, Elder Donna Spinks and Elder Carrie Ledbetter. As you know, we have been asking for names from the congregation to participate on the nominating committee. Good morning. We will be having a congregational meeting on November 8th, immediately following the worship service. We will explain the voting process before that time. If you have a nominee, please call the church office by Thursday, October 29th. Please make sure they have consented to, pro to participate. Have a great week, St. James. Have a great week, St. James. It's that time, church. Souls to the polls. Yes, this election, we are voting for our lives and life more abundantly. Therefore, the Black and Brown Women's 2020 Voting Initiative, of which we are a founding partner with the Beloved Community Center, has joined locally with the pulpit form to make sure that we sponsor Souls to the Polls on Sunday, October 18th, and Sunday, October 25th at Brown Recreation Center beginning at 2 p.m. Now wait, for St. James members, we want to make sure we get there on October the 18th. Therefore, all of you St. James members and friends that want to vote in person during early voting, please meet us in the parking lot of St. James on Sunday, October the 18th at 1.45 so that we can caravan to Brown Recreation Center. Now, for those of you that may think a little bit of 1.45 as being too early, just meet us straight at Brown. But either way, meet us for souls to the polls. And be very clear, this effort is not just going on in Guilford County. This is an effort that is part of a universal North Carolina strategy with the North Carolina Black Alliance, the state NAACP, and Forward Justice to make sure that faith-based communities join the caravan where souls are rolling to the polls. So all across our great state on Sunday, October 18th and Sunday, October 25th, there will be church folk going to vote. But if you're a St. James member, then make sure you are with us which day? October the 18th. We'll gather in our parking lot at 145 and caravan to Brown Recreation Center. Look forward to seeing you then. The hottest newsletter this election season has arrived. The Democracy North Carolina voting guides are here and they're available for you in the George Simpkins room. It is a nonpartisan voting guide that teaches you and tells you about the background of candidates for various offices all across the spectrum. Those running for judge positions, those running for Congress, as well as our own state and local governments. I am sure you want to be educated because that's who you are, St. James. So come by the church and pick up your Democracy North Carolina voting guide. Make sure you wear a mask. Personal protection equipment kits, those are PPE kits for voters, are available in the Simpkins room. The packet includes a mask, gloves, and alcohol pads for disinfection use. Please pick up one at your convenience. You can use these even while you are going to do in-person early voting. PPE equipment free for you in the Simpkins room at St. James. Do you want to help encourage people to vote right from your own home? 
Well, the St. James Presbyterian Church Get Out the Vote Committee is inviting church members to join them in participating in phone bank training. If you want to be involved in this effort and learn how to phone bank, just reach out to our very own Lolita Watkins at 336 273-6658. That's the church's number. You can reach her and leave her a message there so that you can learn how you can be about change. Have you completed your voter pledge online? Do you remember seeing it in your current e-blast or perhaps even on the St. James social media platforms? If you have not completed that voter pledge, please do so. This is a part of our meaningful relationship with Democracy North Carolina, and Democracy North Carolina is a credible organization. The voter pledge is just that. It is a pledge to exercise your right to vote. It's that, but it's even more. For once you fill it out, you're also saying that you do have a voter plan. And it reminds you that during this pandemic, we must have a voter plan. Once you complete it, you will also receive helpful reminders for this general election. There are lots of people and organizations out there sending out incorrect information. But our partnership with Democracy North Carolina ensures that our members and friends have the correct information in a timely manner. So you don't want to miss out. Complete this pledge. Get the helpful reminders and make sure we exercise our right to vote. Did you know that Black Lives Matter, the national movement, was founded by Black women? In like manner, St. James has joined with the beloved Community Center to have a Black and Brown women's voting initiative that, yes, strategizes and brings together Black and Brown women, but is for the benefit of the Black community. If you want to be involved in this initiative, please reach out to Lolita Watkins or go to the Beloved Community Center website, and it has invitations for the Zoom meetings for each ministry and committee area. Our community is together as we fight for our rights and educate, engage, and turn out the vote for this critical election season. Please join us for our Wednesday prayer and devotional at its new time of 12 noon beginning on October 14th. You can join us on Zoom or by dialing in. The Zoom link can be found on your weekly e-blast or either on the St. James website. For those dialing in, you can call 929-205-6099 and enter meeting ID 819-350-16495, followed by the pound sign, and then enter the passcode 820, followed by pound sign. Please join us this week as we seek God's will together. NC Med Assist is partnering with local agencies to host a drive through free mobile pharmacy event, providing residents in need with free over-the-counter medication, as well as free COVID-19 testing and flu vaccines for those who qualify. The event will be held at the Windsor Community Recreation Center, located at 1601 Eastgate City Boulevard on October 29th at 2 p.m. Participants must be at least 18 to receive medication, but no ID is required. We will collect today our regular tithes and offering also. You can simply go to our donate button on our St. James website. You can mail in a physical check to our address, 820 Ross Avenue, or you could also give on Cash App. Whichever way you give. We are grateful that you are sowing into this ministry. Amen.
Let's bow for a word of prayer as we open the word of God this morning to hear yet another word. Gracious and almighty God, we come before you right now to say thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we pray now as we open your word that you would open up our hearts, minds, and ears to receive the word that comes from you. God, we pray that the word will inspire us, that it will inform us, and ultimately that it will lead to a transformed individual and society, O oh God. God, right now, I pray personally that you would hide me behind your son who was slain on the cross of Calvary so that I may not be seen, but he may be glorified and exalted. God, I ask that you would open up the hearts, minds, and ears of your people to receive the word that comes from you, O God. Spirit of living God, fall fresh upon me. Take the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart and allow them to be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray and give thanks, and we all said together, amen. Amen. It was so good to be back in the house of God once more and again, even in the virtual house of God. And so we give God glory. We give God praise for what he's doing uh, individually in all of our lives and collectively through this body of uh, Christ, this body of the church called St. James Presbyterian Church. Listen, I want to continue in our series this month, uh, preaching about the relationship between faith and politics. Um, we've been dealing with uh, how we as Christians are to engage with the government. And so this morning, I want to pull up a passage of scripture that will inspire us, teach us how we are to continue and to be pers persistent and persevere in, in that engagement with the government. This morning, I want to call our attention to the 18th chapter of the, oh, the New Testament book of Luke. Luke chapter number 18, I'll begin reading at verse number one. I'll be reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And this is what the word of God says. Luke says, then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said in a certain city, this is Jesus, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later the judge said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Jesus said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? One more time. Verse number two simply reads this. Jesus said in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people in that city. There was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. Grant me justice against my opponent. Last week, we dealt with the title rules of engagement. This week, I want to preach part two of rules and of rules of engagement for just a few moments. I want to talk upon the subject rules of engagement part two. Last week, we examined the ways in which our faith as Christians lead us to engage in politics. We considered a couple of points from Romans chapter 13, a passage of scripture that has often been taken out of context in order to justify the unconditional submission to governments that wield power in unethical forms. We discovered that it is our job as Christians to remind leaders that it is their responsibility to use their positions in government to govern in such a manner that reflects their place in the will of God, as well as it is our duty for to remind them that it is their job to govern in a manner that reflects their place in the will of God, as well as for the good of all people. We learned that when the government begins to operate outside of the will of God and ceases to have the best interest of those whose social conditions have usurped their voice, it is ultimately a government that is actively rebelling against God. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a government that we are to resist. We learn that 
government, as Paul said in Romans 13, has been instituted by God. And that word for institution, instituted is the word tasso, which literally means that God has assigned it a place within his will that that government has a specific purpose in the design of God's order and God's will and that God has given it a place and a purpose and it is in line with the intentions of God literally meaning that whenever government starts to act in a manner that gets outside of its place it is literally outside of the will of God and that is a government we must resist that is a government we must hold accountable and we must remind it of its place in the will of God and must urge it through advocacy and agitation to get back in order so this morning my brothers and sisters, we want to look at what or how do we go about raising our voice in a manner that advocates for justice to be administered and ultimately the will of God to be carried out. This morning, I would like for us to uh, consider a picture of a person whose character I believe is a perfect example of what it looks like when faith inspires political advocacy. In other words, whenever we engage in government, this is what it looks like. This person that we're going to raise up this morning actually isn't a real person, but their place in scripture serves as an example for us who are living as Christians in society. This person is a person who has been made up literally in the mind of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus is telling a parable. Uh, Luke narrates this scene for us. He says that Luke, or rather Jesus, is telling this parable uh, about the need to constantly be in prayer and not to lose heart. And so to do that, Jesus tells a story of a woman who is a widow about this widow woman who continually goes in the presence of an unjust judge and judge who the text says neither fear, neither fears God nor does he respect humanity and she continues to go in the presence of this judge with this one question with this one concern simply saying grant me justice against my opponent once again, this is a parable. It's a story that's literally made up in the mind of Jesus, but it's what we call an exemplary parable, meaning that although it's made up in the mind of Jesus, uh, it is an example of an ideal situation, literally meaning that perhaps Jesus may have had someone in mind when he told this story, and so he's speaking subliminally. Uh, he this 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 story uh, could have this woman rather could have uh, had the name of some woman in that society attached to this person. And I'm sure that the listeners and the audience of Jesus probably knew a few examples of some strong widow women who uh, needed justice in society and had times where they had to go before the judge continually saying, grant me a justice against my opponent. So Jesus is telling an exemplary parable about a widow woman who goes in the presence of the judge requesting justice against her opponent bible tells us that this judge is one who didn't fear god he's one that that felt like he was in such a position to where god's rule and god's authority and god's sovereignty did not affect him in other words he is actively rebelling against the will and order of God. Can you imagine that? Uh, living in such a way to where you feel like you are literally untouchable by God who made you. Literally untouchable by the one who created you. The one who knows the number of hairs on your head. The one who's known you even before you were conceived in your mother's womb. The one who knows you're going out and you're coming in. You mean to tell me you don't have any fear of God? 
But 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 how does this judge exemplify the fact that he doesn't fear God? The way in which we know this judge doesn't fear God and ultimately then doesn't fear or have regard nor respect for humanity is expressed in his dealings with this widow woman. You see, in Jewish society, widows were to be given special treatment in the law to prevent them from being used and abused due to their circumstances. Widows were often left in a vulnerable position. Uh, they could be taken advantage of very easily because they were in a, a peculiar situation because their husband had died. And as a result, most women uh, didn't own property at that time. So what they would have gotten uh, would have came from the inheritance of their husband. But oftentimes it became a troubling situation, especially when the husband owned a lot of property and had a lot of assets to the point to where other people of his family would have felt like they had an, uh, a direct claim to his inheritance, a direct claim to his property and assets. And so oftentimes they would take these widow women to trial uh, in hopes that they could win at the court of law uh, the inheritance of their relative who was the widow woman's husband. Oftentimes these people had money that they could continue to throw in the legal system and oftentimes they would throw money at the judges to sway uh, their favor and their judgment towards them which literally went against the will of God because God literally said in the Old Testament that judges, especially in Exodus whenever judges come on the scene through the counsel of Jethro to Moses, that judges were not to be swayed by dishonest gain. Uh, the balance beam of justice was to be unbiased, but yet they engaged in a system where justice went to the highest bidder. Justice went to the one who bankrolled their lifestyle. Justice went to the political action committees like the NRA who felt like in order for them to gain legislation and policies in their favor that they just had to keep on financing the campaigns and the careers of political leaders. That left folks like this widow woman on the margins to where whenever she went to court to protest and advocate for her best interest, she was literally fighting a losing battle. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you feel like you're taking on a noble cause, whether it's in your personal life or in the life of politics, that you're fighting a just and righteous and noble cause, but it seems like the wealth of the wicked continues to reign prevalent in society and that the wicked seems to continue to thrive while the righteous seems like we are continually being cast down. Have you ever been in a place where you felt like you were doing the right thing, but it seemed like those who are doing the wrong thing are getting the right outcomes? Have you ever been in a place where you felt like all hope was lost? And how did that make you feel when, when you're doing what you know is right? When you know you're fighting the right fight, going after the right cause, but you're getting what seems like the wrong results. What do you do? How do you engage in life when that begins to happen? There's a lesson that this widow woman teaches us, and that widow woman literally teaches us that whenever things are not going your way, whether it's personal life or your political life, that widow woman literally teaches us that we must continue to be motivated by our expectations. Watch this. The text says she showed up to this judge continually, meaning she's being persistent. She continues to go there requesting justice, meaning that every time she's gone, She's got an answer that wasn't in her favor. Every time she showed up, justice had been denied. 
I don't know how many times she showed up. The text says that she continually went there time after time. And the, the word that is used there in Greek is chronos, meaning uh, it's, it's, it's uh, dates in succession. That it's day by day or could be month by month, could be week by week, could be year by year. We don't know how long she went there, but it's been some time. Imagine how many days she woke up got dressed, put on her court clothes, uh, got everything together, got her paperwork together, proven that she had a right to the inheritance, went down, rehearsed her lines, um, had to hear the same old uh, political rhetoric that is spewed there at the court system. And every day she went up, she got up, she went down to the court only to be told that justice had been denied. In essence, really, justice had been delayed because it says that for a time that she continued to went down there and would go down there and kept getting the same result. And we know, like Dr. Martin Luther King said, that justice delayed is inevitably justice denied. Every day, every time she went to court, she heard that justice was not going to be done in her favor, but yet she persisted because she had an expectation. She simply said whenever she got into the judge's presence, she kept saying these words, grant me justice against my opponent. I I've come to, 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 to realize in life that oftentimes what keeps you going when you're getting unfavorable results, what keeps you going when it seems like the journey that you're on continues to press you down? What keeps you going when you don't get the outcome that you desire is your expectation. You have to ask yourself, what do I expect from this? Oftentimes when your expectation has the right amount of value to you, meaning that whenever what you expect is worth it, you don't care how many times you try and how many times you fail, you will just simply pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and try again. That's a word for us in this political season, I believe, because whenever you look at the history of American society, and realize how long justice has been delayed for black people. I honestly could understand why some folk would feel like giving up. I honestly could understand why some folk feel like they shouldn't vote and that their vote means absolutely nothing. But when I consider the things that I expect out of all of this, my expectations lead me to continue to show up to the polls. My expectation continues to lead me to continue to show up and speak truth to power. My expectations enable and inspire me to keep on pressing even though justice has been delayed because I expect justice in society. When you don't get <laughs> what it is that you want, when you don't get the outcome that you seek, your expectations tell you that this ain't the time to give up now. This ain't the first time you've been told no. This isn't the first time the judge has said not today. This isn't the first time we may or may not have had the candidates who fit the best interests of our people. This isn't the best time where it was literally a battle of or a choice between what some would call the lesser of two evils. This ain't the first time we had a racist and crazy president. So guess what? And keep on expecting justice to come. And I've come to understand that when you press on and persist and keep on expecting what you expect, sooner or later, you will get the results that you're going to get. David would say like this, I once was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David also said that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land 
land of the living. Sometimes it seems like we're living in the land of the dying, especially in a time where we're facing coronavirus, where 200,000 people have uh, lost their life to a virus that could have been avoided if our egotistical maniacal president would have done the right thing when he had the opportunity to do it, but yet instead he's responsible for the death of 200,000 Americans. It seems like we're living in the land of the dying. Whenever you walk around in the black community, no matter where you are, whether it's in Greensboro, whether it's in Charlotte, whether it's in Louisville, Kentucky, whether it's in Atlanta, Georgia, all across the United States, it seems like we're living in the land of the dying because walking around in the black community can sometimes be depressing because of the conditions that we're in, but yet because we expect to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, that informs us and inspires us to keep on pressing, knowing that like the songwriter said, a change is going to come. I wonder is there anybody out there who can testify today that I'm not going to give up, whether it's in my personal life or whether it's in the life of the politics of this nation. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to throw in the towel because I expect something to change. I got to quit. I got to quit. She kept on going. <laughs> yeah, imagine how tired her legs were from walking to the court every day. Uh, uh, knowing that she's probably going to get the result that she got the day before. But but she kept on going despite how tired her legs had got, despite how worn her shoes may have gotten, despite the fact that she may have wore out all of her court dresses. She kept on going because she said, I expect justice. And if this prayer is a prayer that teaches us that when you know man fails us but God will never fail us and that if we can do this for an unrighteous judge imagine what God who is the righteous judge will do for us uh, if, if we could do this for a crazy fool like Donald Trump imagine the power of your prayer when you take it to Jesus saying Lord I know circumstances are bad Lord, I know it seems like this pandemic ain't never going to end. Lord, I know my family is struggling. Lord, I know I've got all this craziness going on around me. But God, I expect you to make some changes. Is there anybody that can say, today I have expectations. Matter of fact, I'm expecting God to make a way. I'm expecting, yeah, I am expecting. Uh, she, she kept on going. And her persistence and her expectations finally led the judge to utter these words. This is what he said. He said, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this woman, widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. What I love about it is this woman teaches us a valuable lesson that I wish a lot of right wing conservative evangelicals would get. And that is you start to see a uh, division amongst Christ Christians today who are so divided because uh, we're trying to reconcile changing structures and systems with also changing hearts of individuals. Because Christianity informs us that, um, you know, the heart of a person matters. You can do a lot of good things, but have a bad heart. And Christianity and our faith preaches about the transformation of hearts, which is needed. We need hearts to change. Some folks seem like, you know, I'm not a Calvinist, but I get what John Calvin was talking about when he talked about some folk being totally depraved because that's literally the, the ringleader of the circus show that lives at 1600 Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington, D.C., the one with the orange wig. I, you know, his heart may be totally depraved. And if so, John Calvin, look, I get it. I'm with you on that one. Mitch McConnell, totally depraved. I get it. Some folk just can't do nothing. You, you can't save them. You know, we can't do it. The Holy Spirit can do it. And if, and if the Holy Spirit does it, we know Jesus is real. But, 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 but we are to uh, preach about the transformation of hearts. But we cannot allow uh, the transformation of hearts and the delay of that transformation to get in the way of our work to transform systems and structures in society that oppressed people. 
Watch this. This woman went with a specific claim. Her claim was to get justice for her life. Not one time does she go to the judge and say, today I'm going to preach to him to get his heart changed because until his heart uh, changes, if his heart don't change, I won't get justice. No, she didn't say that. She didn't say that, that her expectation of justice was depending upon the transformation of the heart of this individual. She went to get justice. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and she didn't wait until the character of the judge changed to meet with him to get what she needed. All I'm trying to tell us, and this might land me in some hot water, and that's fine. But all I'm trying to tell us is sometimes what justice, the work of justice requires of us is getting in the presence of some folk we don't agree with, causing us to work with folk, especially folk that we don't agree with who are elected officials, to get what we need because advocacy does not depend on working with people who you only like. In other words, what I'm trying to say is sometimes you have to work with and meet with some folk like Trump, who is an elected official, to get what it is that you need. You need justice, and that one who's standing in the way of you and your justice claim is evil. Guess what? They're just an obstacle for you to go through because the, nobody promised that it would be easy. <laughs> Oftentimes, you know, they say good things come to those who wait and also good things come to those who persevere, those who endure. Because sometimes, you know, if the, the, the greater the barrier in front of it, the greater the blessing that will come as a result of it. She said, I'm not going to wait until he gets his heart right because he may never get his heart right. But, but I'm going to continue to advocate for justice to be done. And one of the last thing I want to pull up from this text, and I'm done, is that, you know, oftentimes when we consider widows in Scripture, because widows were in a peculiar situation, because they were in a vulnerable state, they're often characterized and thought of, conceptualized as uh, uh, weak, as nimble people, people who... Uh, had no voice because, you know, the prophets often talked about uh, being a voice for the widows. In fact, there's one scripture in Psalms where God literally said that God will kill someone who did wrong by widows. I believe it's Psalm 28. Um, that God would uh, avenge widows in such a way that God himself said that he will literally kill someone who messes with widows who were weak and unable to fight for themselves. But right here, Jesus does something peculiar that I love. And, and you'll miss it uh, just reading it in the English. Uh, uh, Jesus gives power and strength and a voice to a person who has been marginalized in such a way to where their voice has been muted and their strength, yeah, uh, has been taken for granted. Because right here, this widow woman does something that other widow women normally don't do in scripture, and that is she speaks for herself. Not only does she speak for herself, she recognizes the power of her voice, but she recognizes the power of her advocacy. I told you, y'all miss it in the original language, or in the, in the English language. Watch this. This is what the judge said. Jesus said that the judge said this. He said, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow, watch this, keeps bothering me, Underline that in your Bible. Keeps bothering me. I will grant her justice so that she may not, watch this, wear me out by continually coming. That word that's used there to talk about the widow woman bothering him and wearing him out is the Greek word hippopiazzo. Wherever you are, just shout. We're going to learn Greek today. Hippopiazzo. Hippopiazzo is a combat term. It is a boxing term. And it literally means to hit in such a way that you leave the other person, watch this, with a black eye. <laughs> ah, y'all missed it. In other words, 
this judge is literally saying <laughs> that for her to keep coming down here talking about get me justice in front of all these people who's here at the court and for all these people who's at the city gate to get justice claims for themselves for her to keep coming and saying get me justice she's literally giving me a black eye yeah. Yeah. it's a bad sister girl no matter how many times she kept coming no matter how long it took she kept on swinging for what it is that she wanted and she did not lose strength because she was motivated by what she expected in other words all i'm trying to tell you is when you go about doing the work of god god will see to it that he'll give you strength and power when moments where you feel like you should be weak god will be your strength uh, Paul said it like this that he realized that when he's weak God said he'll be his strength and I wonder is there anybody out there that can testify that there has been some moments in your life where you felt like you should have been knocked out when you felt like you should have uh, been hit over the ropes when you felt like life had you in a such a way where you should have been out for the count but God gave you strength to keep on swinging is there anybody out there that can say that the Despite what comes my way, I'm still going to keep on swinging. Though life keeps on hitting me, guess what? I'm going to do like Ali and do a rope of dope and just keep on swinging. Though the storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell night from day. Still there's hope that lies within that reassures that I keep my eye on the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, if the winds keep blowing in my life, my soul is anchored in the Lord and because my soul is anchored in the Lord I have strength to keep on pressing on my word for us today is that if we are to engage in government if we're to engage in any form of op opposition and obstacles in our life we must be motivated by our expectations and recognize that we are more powerful than we think I know folk are mad and upset about the, maybe they be, they may be mad and upset about the choices that we have this ain't the first time america has had a bad election i know america most folk feel like that there's nothing to gain from this that that their voice that their vote doesn't matter because uh it, it's under possible threat of russian or other countries uh interference but i've come to tell you that you have more power than you think your advocacy doesn't stop at the ballot box. Your advocacy continues when whoever is elected is in office, you still have a vote because ultimately they represent you and have been assigned a place in the will of God to look out for your best interest and for your good. And whenever they are not fulfilling that obligation, whenever they are not tending to their responsibilities, it is up to you and your voice and your advocacy to go there and demand a society where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Let's pray this morning. Gracious and eternal God, we come before you right now to say thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. God, we thank you for the strength that we get that comes from you, God, to continue to keep on swinging. God, ultimately, we know that sometimes we may not get everything that we want. But the beauty of this text is knowing that despite the fact that this judge was so unjust, that this judge didn't fear you, had no regard for humanity, and that sometimes we may not get the result that this widow woman got, we understand that the latter portion of the text inspires us to know that you are still on the throne and you can do us better than any judge can do us. That's why the old saints would say, can't nobody do us like Jesus. So God, give us strength. I pray for someone who feels like they are powerless, God. Let them know that they have more power than they could ever imagine whenever you are on their side, God. That if God be for us, you are more than the whole world against us. We love you, God. We thank you. Give us strength. 
In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. And all the people of God said together, Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in this week. I pray that the message uh, was uplifting and inspiring to you. And so right now I want to take this opportunity to make a special invitation. There may be someone out there who has heard this message that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Listen, I want to invite you right now to give your life to Jesus uh, and give your heart to him. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that offer still stands today. So I want to extend that invitation to you. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, please do it today. 2020 has taught us that tomorrow is not promised. All you have is right now. So please, ma'am, please, sir, please, sibling, comment in the Facebook Live comment section or send a message in the Zoom chat section. And also, if you don't have a church home, we would love to connect you with St. James Presbyterian Church. Um, please also uh, comment in the Facebook Live comment section or send a message in our Zoom chat section and we will be in touch with you. Once again, thank you for tuning in this week. We hope to see you again next week. Let us now receive the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And we all said together, Amen. God bless you. Once again, thanks for tuning in with us this week. We hope to see you again next week.